this is a question coming from Mary on Instagram. She says, I hear a lot of people talk about hypothyroidism, but what about hyperthyroidism, Graves' disease? What should someone do to get better from Graves? Yeah. And so we get this question often because, you know, we put out a lot of content and a lot of other, you know, websites put out a lot of content on hypothyroidism or too low thyroid function because that's much more common than hyperthyroidism. And so, you know, we tend to create more content associated with that and discuss that more. But hyperthyroidism or Graves' disease, which is an autoimmune condition that causes higher amounts of thyroid hormone to be released from the thyroid gland, is a significant issue and it's a growing condition and it can be life threatening because when you have too much thyroid hormone you end up increasing your metabolism in the cells too much and that can particularly impact things like your your cardiovascular system right and cause tachycardia where your your heart heart's just racing cause afib so atrial fibrillation where you in, in a sense your heart goes into a spasm and uh, so it's not able to, to contract and release effectively and get the blood and the oxygen to the tissues. And of course, that can lead to a cardiac event, right? And, and, and end up and you end up in the hospital or even, you know, God forbid, even dying. And so it, it can be a life-threatening condition. And it's typically, you know, typically they, they either shut down the thyroid with, uh, with medication or they will actually go in, remove the thyroid or, or damage the thyroid to where it's not able to, to produce thyroid hormone. And so when, whenever we're looking at autoimmune condition, I always think, you know, gut health, right? We, we always have to look at leaky gut. So we know that when the intestinal lining is damaged, that that is a foundational component of any autoimmune condition, because now bacteria, large undigested food particles, other microbes, microbial debris are all getting into the bloodstream, driving this enhanced immune activity. And that can turn into autoimmunity. And depending on somebody's genetics, that can lead to Graves' disease or hyperthyroidism. So we have to start healing the gut. We got to look at the diet, you know. So if you've got a lot of processed food, sugars, gluten, gluten is a is a significant trigger for uh for autoimmune conditions, particularly Graves' disease. So we've got to look at that dairy, you know. So usually we're gonna look at diet and make some significant diet changes. We're also gonna look at things like vitamin D. So actually getting your vitamin D optimized, which would be a suggestion we'd look at for, for hypothyroidism as well. And we see with Graves and, and hyperthyroidism, typically their vitamin D levels are really low, under 30 nanograms per milliliter. In fact, many of them are very low, under 20 nanograms per milliliter. And so we want to get that up in that 60, 80 uh, nanogram per milliliter range. So getting a good vitamin D3 and taking that with meals can be really significant. And that can play a big role. And there's a lot of other things we could talk about. Dr. Yvonne, why don't you jump in and discuss this topic a little bit? Yes, and this is very important that we make a distinction between autoimmune condition and just your regular hyperthyroidism. Because you know, the your approach in addressing that condition is very different. So we need to be aware that it's a mechanism that is happening of your own body attacking itself. In particular, in this case, the receptors of the thyroid producing hormone. And so we, that is so very important because your, your, your strategy will be different. Like you said, you know, addressing the gut, addressing pathogens, uh, you know, toxins, et cetera, stress, all of that is so, so very important. And a lot of times uh, we, we also need to address and that is also ignored is like your mental state, you know, your view of life. Uh, that can also be a factor in contributing to that mechanism. And, and you can think of, uh, of this condition as the accelerator stuck. It's just like it's constantly accelerating. So what it's going to do is going to wear out all your organs because everything depends on your thyroid and, and your thyroid sets the rate in which things happen. So if this is constantly accelerated, it's just systemic. Everything is going to be affected and worn out. So like you said, it's really important that we address that. The other thing that is important to know that once you have a, one autoimmune condition, more than likely there's others. So where are the others? So the next question is, is there another um, organ or system that is being attacked 
through this auto uh, immune mechanism. Yeah, it's key. And and going back to what you talked about there, we have to look at pathogens. So a lot of times there's gut infections, parasites, or maybe an H. pylori overgrowth in the stomach, some sort of dysbiosis going on in the gut. Sometimes there's high histamine producing bacteria like Klebsiella that will overgrow in the gut and uh, you know trigger more of a, an immune reaction when your when your histamine levels increase. And so we've got to look at how your body's responding to histamine, gut dysbiosis, perhaps there's fungal overgrowth in your gut, candida and other other yeast organisms. Perhaps you're being exposed to mold. So we got to look at different toxins, heavy metals. Maybe you've, you've had amalgam or silver fillings in your mouth, or you've gotten a lot of vaccines or something like that, that would expose you to a lot of heavy metals. So these are all things that we need to consider when we're looking at the root cause factors. Sometimes there's some low hanging fruit when it comes to reducing the intensity of the symptoms. And that's why I was mentioning vitamin D. That's something that, you know, typically you can improve your levels of vitamin D pretty quickly and it, and it can make a significant impact. I've seen a lot of people with hyperthyroidism and other autoimmune conditions, when you get their vitamin D levels optimized, they feel better, right? It doesn't get to the full root cause oftentimes because there's these other factors, but they do feel better. And obviously that plays a big role. <clears throat> if we can improve your sleep quality, you know, getting you uh, wearing blue light blocking glasses in after dark and dimming your lights and going to bed at a good time and, and getting really good quality sleep, setting your room temperature proper, properly, having a fan on, wearing an eye mask, doing all the great sleep hygiene that we talk about a lot on, on this podcast. If we can do that and you're sleeping better and getting morning sunshine and things like that and getting movement in, oftentimes you're, you're going to feel better. Meanwhile, hopefully you're working, if you have an autoimmune condition, you should be working with some sort of a, a, a functional health practitioner, somebody like Dr. Yvonne, where they can actually figure out what the root cause driving factors are. Like we said, infections, toxins, stressors, maybe your body's in a, in a state of PTSD where you have post-traumatic stress from something that happened in your life. We've got to look at those things and really address them, peel back the, the onion in a sense, right? Get to the the deeper layers and start to heal and repair those things. But again, with, with hyperthyroidism, a lot of the, the natural treatment is really the same as hypothyroidism. I would say the big thing that we avoid would be high iodine foods and iodine containing supplements when somebody has hyperthyroidism. Other than that, treatment oftentimes can be very, very similar. Um, in the sense that you know we're, we're really just trying to get to the root cause. But if we're adding in a lot of iodine, iodine is, is basically what you need to produce thyroid hormone, right? So when we look at T4, that's four iodine molecules, T3, which is the active form of thyroid hormone, it's three iodine molecules. And so if you've got enough iodine, your body's gonna produce the thyroid hormone. And so if we're adding in more iodine, that can cause worsening or worsened types of symptoms. And then we may increase the amount of goitrogen, goitrogenic types of foods in somebody with hyperthyroidism. Goitrogens are plant compounds that will actually bind to iodine. So we may add some of those in as long as your body tolerates them well, like if you feel good eating them. And a lot of these higher goitrogenic foods are foods that have health benefits. You just may, you would just want to make sure you're digesting them well. That would be like things like broccoli, kale, uh, cauliflower. Um, all, all of your cruciferous veggies have higher amounts of goitrogens, which are going to, you know, not have a significant impact, but it might help bump you in, in a, in a positive direction if you've got hyperthyroidism. So consuming those foods, you know, the, really the best benefit of those foods are they increase your NRF2 pathway and your, which is how your body deals with oxidative stress. So they help to reduce oxidative stress. They also have detoxification components. They help your body with detoxification and obviously that's really beneficial as well. So, um, so that would be, you know, some of the major things, anything else there, Dr. Yvonne, that we're missing on this topic. Yes. This topic? Nutrition is very important. There are other uh, compounds that we can, um, introduce in our diet, such as curcumin. 
yeah. is very anti-inflammatory and research has shown that it can decrease antibodies. Things like L-carnitine blocks the effects of thyroid hormones. Selenium also reduces inflammation. And some Chinese herbs have been found to help with this, you know, lowering thyroid hormones. So those are the things that we can also use when addressing um, Graves' disease. And I just want to super emphasize the importance of sleep. Sleep, you know, if you have any kind of health condition, but particularly autoimmune condition, you have to sleep. You have to sleep. And so it's very important that, like you're saying, if you're having difficulty, address that. Sleep hygiene is very important because sleep is when you repair and recover. And, you know, there's so many things that happen during your sleep for your health to be better and your immune system gets reset, et cetera, et cetera. So, yes, absolutely. Sleep is so very important. Yeah, super key. So we also have a great article on hyperthyroidism that you can check out on drjockers.com if you want uh, research citations and if you just want to understand a lot, it's a lot more thorough even than what we talked about today. So, um, so go and check that out as well. Mm -hmm.